Hello and welcome to our YouTube channel. My name is Shubhashi Singh Rehal and you are watching IS Primers. Now today is 5th of June 2021. It is the day when World Environment Day is celebrated. And the theme for today, that is the theme for the year 2021 is restoration of ecosystem. So in this topic, we are going to learn about the basics of the World Environment Day, which will be helpful for preliminaries. And we are going to learn about the restoration of ecosystem. So something that will give you some insights for your mains answer writing. Now I want to, I want to give you a compelling picture about the impact mankind has had on the ecosystem. You know, because of the increased human activity, what is happening is the man has encroached into the natural habitat for animals. That is, the area of the natural habitat for the animals has reduced and as a result, it is an ideal situation for more and more pathogens to come into the human life. So today it is the coronavirus which is associated with the bats. Earlier it was the Nipah virus which was again with the fruit bats. Before that it was Zika virus, then it was Ebola and so many other viruses that are coming and entering into the human life. So we need to reconsider our approach when we are, you know, about the natural habitat that we are encroaching into. Then coming to the oceans, there is something known as coral reefs. So here you can see the image. So these are coral reefs. So these are normally very close to the continental tribe, and these are very scenic. They are nice and colorful and they accommodate a lot of life. As you can see, a lot of fishes are there and there are many other species which we cannot see actually. It's a highly biodiverse area. But because of global warming, that is heating of the uh, you know, water, sea surface temperature is increasing and because of acidification of the ocean, you know the carbon dioxide that is being emitted, that is entering into the waters, it is ultimately entering into the oceans and therefore the ocean is getting acidic. So this is what the coral reefs are turning into. You can see that the coral, be, uh, coral uh, reefs have bleached, right? Bleaching has taken place and it no longer supports that vibrant life and color that was associated with it. So it is said that 50% of the world's coral reefs are already destroyed and 90% of them would be destroyed by 2050. So something needs to be done urgently. Then, with respect to the forest lands, you know, without saying anything, we know that most of the land that was there before the humankind, it was forest. But man, for its all, re all uh, many reasons, like farming activities, man needs food, man has a settled life, man needs uh, cities, right? So more and more forest land has been diverse, uh, you know, diverted to the humankind. It is said that every three seconds, every three seconds, enough forest is being lost, which is equal to a football pitch. Then, coming to the wetlands. Wetlands is the part of a land, continental land, which is immersed or submerged under the water. So it could be something as simple as a lake, or it could be something like this. You know, you can see the grass. So there is grass, there is live land, but there is under the water. There is oh, on this, there is water. And likewise, even this can be classified as a wetland, this portion. So large number of wetlands have been destroyed. So more specifically, half of the wetlands of the world. So again, for the same reasons, basically wetlands were area, which is, where, you know, sometimes water is not there. So it is, it's felt it's easy to divert that land for other activities like creation of cities. So when the Chennai floods had taken place in 2015, 15, 16, when it had taken place, 
it was seen that large number of wetlands were actually uh, you know given away and it were transferred for making of cities it parks offices etc so when there was excess flow of water the the water could not be stored in the wetlands so wetlands act as a reservoir of water and in turn it affected the city life so the chennai had actually practically drowned so it's very important and also we need to look at the issue of climate change it is something which is single handedly affecting the entire global climate and the global ecosystem and we all know it is basically the emissions from industrial industrial activities power plants thermal power plants and also vehicular emissions so that needs to be corrected now with reference to the correction we are now coming to the how world environment day came about basically a need was felt to create greater awareness about environment especially on the international forums international platforms where it was felt that environment is not something specific to a location rather environment is a global common so this image that you see the image that you see over here this is from 1972 it was a united nations conference on in uh, united nations conference on environment so it was in stockholm which is the capital of sweden so here it was for the first time that environment was taken up on an international forum and there was a need felt that there should be a global concerted effort on looking at the issue of the environment so it was in the year 1972 and to mark this day the world environment day is celebrated so which is 5th of june so environment from now on came on the international forefront and to sustain this activity related to environment you know the negotiations talks etc a new agency of the united nations was formed which is known as united nations environment program with its headquarters or secretariat in nairobi kenya so this is an exception because most of the un related bodies are in either washington dc or paris but here it is in nairobi kenya so this is an exception and therefore likely to be asked in upsc so these are the basic details and facts and this particular image that you see it is about the head of the you know head of the conference that had taken place in 1972 and they have signed a paper marking the first world environment day with its with its theme as only one earth so it is written on the paper i know you are watching it on the mobile and it will be difficult to see but it is written only one earth so that was the theme for the year 1972 or the first world environment day now this particular world environment day that is we are talking about 2021 so this is being hosted by pakistan now it makes it difficult for india to attend it so it is being hosted by pakistan in partnership with united nations environment program quite natural right or who else would do it it is the theme of this particular uh, year is 2021 as ecosystem restoration and this year 2021 it also marks as the launch of the un decade un decade on ecosystem restoration so 2021 to 2030 this 10 years would be dedicated you know uh, with special focus on ecosystem restoration yeah so this 2021 to 2030 this also marks the conclusion of the sustainable developmental goals the targets associated so 2000 uh, the sdgs were to be concluded by 2030 and un decade on ecosystem restoration also concludes back then yeah so it says that the focus of ecosystem restoration is going to be on both 
the continent as well as ocean it is going to be everywhere and all ecosystems are going to be addressed and this will be headed by united nations environment program and also food and agriculture organization which is again a un agency which you should know for your prelims now a question arises we understand why unep is there but why is food and agriculture organization is there food and agriculture organization makes sense because most of the forest ecosystem is being you know given away as farms so food and agriculture organization makes sense over here now coming to the suggestions with respect to ecosystem restoration now here i am going to present you different different types of ecosystem one by one the problems and some suggestions for reform now coming to the first one which is farmland ecosystem so here on the right side just forget the text let's focus on the image images are much better right so image yes so farm farmland here you can see so you could imagine that this land would have been filled with trees so trees meaning forest so this must have been forest land which has been diverted for farming activities so one now it is not possible to go back to the original state it's not a rational thing to do because it will affect the food security nutrition security and also it would affect the livelihood rather say livelihood security of the farmers large number of people are dependent on their on their the income on the farmlands in india it is 55% of the population so we need to do something what we can do now is we can mitigate the damage that has done we can have more sustainable farming practices for example we can incorporate climate smart agriculture one case where it could be implemented is the semi arid areas of punjab and haryana you know these are dry areas but again rice cultivation is being done because of the msp policy so rice cultivation is being done and rice needs lot of water so ground water is being taken up river water is not there so ground water is being used and as a result farming is taking place but the ground water is getting depleted so there is scarcity of water and ultimately there is scarcity of water and as we go deeper into the water table we are being exposed to heavy water you know heavy minerals in the water like mercury arsenic etc so these are again carcinogenic so this is problematic so we need to adopt climate smart agriculture and we need to focus we need to reduce our dependence on pesticides also now large number of pesticides are used in this area you can imagine so pesticides because pests are there insects are there which will destroy their crops so we need to have another approach which is known as integrated pest management that is adopting a practice which minimizes the use of pesticides then there is another policy that is being advo advocated that is known as reducing tillage tillage you understand tilling the land so land you know basically the, below the land there is carbon dioxide there is methane there are various gases so when tilling is done the gases are exposed to the atmosphere so again climate change will take place so this needs to be corrected and rectified and also we can encourage agroforestry you know certain plant, trees could be planted and trees can provide firewood the trees can provide fruits so it can provide lot of benefits and it can augment the income of the farmers so that can be done next is fresh water ecosystem what is fresh water by the way fresh water is lakes fresh water is river water it is also ground water it is also the ice that is stored on the mountains so all of this is fresh water but in this case specifically we are talking about river ecosystem so you know river ecosystem you can imagine the yamuna where pollution is a very big problem so what we need to do is let's say this is the yamuna river that is flowing we need to stop the flow of sewerage untreated sewerage we need to treat the sewerage and then drain it to the water 
So this needs to be rectified. We need to manage the fishing and mining activities. Mine, mining activities again. You know the my, mines are there and uh, most of them are associated with rivers also. They are close to rivers. So when the mining takes place, especially in the open pit mines. So when rain takes place, it you know it takes away the pollutants, heavy metals and other things. And it discharges it into the stream water stream so this is an image of mine related pollutants getting into the water so you can imagine what would happen to the life that resides in the water it will get affected and ultimately this water would be filtered and be uh, consumed by the man it would be consumed by the man and those heavy metals and pollutants not everything is filtered right so ultimately we'll be consuming it so it is very very bad so we need to rectify that and we need to ensure a good stream or good flow of water. So we need to remove, remove or improve the dams. That also we need to do. We also need to focus on our wetlands and all other points. Now coming to mountain ecosystem. Mountains comprise of one fourth of the land mass. One fourth. And in India, we all know it is the Himalayas, Aravlis. Uh, what is that? Western, Western Ghats, Eastern Ghats. So there are so many options actually, mountain ecosystem. So mountain ecosystem is again very disturbed. Now you can imagine when we talk about disturbance, you can imagine the Uttarakhand floods of 2013. And this image talks a thousand words. You can see the unplanned nature of development that has taken place. Urbanization has taken place, you know, un, uh, because of economic reasons. Large, large number of houses have, have been built in where it was not suitable, ecologically suitable. Hotels have been built. Large number of people are residing in for, uh, mountain areas, in cities. So as a result of this, there is a lot of pressure on that ecosystem. Normally, mountain ecosystem is quite fragile and it needs to be taken. A lot of care needs to be taken. So we need to adopt right practices. We need to adopt sustainable farming practices. We need to encourage agroforestry. We need to ensure there is careful infrastructure planning. So all of this will make a big impact. Also, uh, we need to reforest the mountain slopes. You must have seen a lot of images actually, I have not added here. So you would have seen, you know, the trees have forests. But here you would see a lot of logs of woods are there on the forest slopes. So they are taken out because we need wood. This uh, mountain related wood is very precious also. So for various reasons or it could be for firewood. So we need to reforest them. So this would be very important and this would help in reducing the soil erosion. It would help in checking of the floods, landslides and avalanches. So mountain ecosystems. Then coastal ocean and coastal restoration needs to be done. Now this image you can see it basically tells a sad story where plastic waste is ultimately going into the oceans. So this needs to stop. We need to rectify this particular problem. Then there are many other things like climate change. We need to mitigate climate change so that the sea surface temperature is maintained. And we also need to ensure the acidification of the ocean that is taking place. We need to stop that. So ocean is so big, it's actually 70%. But if we can manage the activities on the land itself, the ocean and coastal restoration will naturally take place. So that needs to be done. Lastly, urban ecosystem restoration. Urban is very important. You know, the cities, uh, the urban areas constitutes 1% of the land, 1% of the land, but it has 50% of the population, human population. And therefore, there is a need to restore the urban ecosystem and make it more habitable. You know, because of the urban uh, setup that is there and the construction of the apartments and buildings, what is happening is we see this phenomena of uh, island, uh, you know, island, uh, urban heat islands, basically. So we are seeing this in the development of urban heat islands. That is the urban areas are relatively warm. 
So if they are relatively warm, it's going to be difficult to live in that area. So we need to encourage the greening of the urban areas. Now there is a very interesting concept associated here that is urban forestry. Basically using the urban landscape, how urban landscape can be used to build forest and greenery in that area. So this is one interesting concept and this is proposed in Singapore. So this is an image from there. So we need to encourage plantation of trees, development of urban woodlands, wildlife, wildlife habitat, etc. And we also need to correct this wrong of concretization, concretization of urban landscape. What is concrete? Cement. So cement and all. So when you put water, the water doesn't flow, right? So as a result, what is happening is there is groundwater recharge is not taking place because most of the urban landscape is concretized. Every single inch is being taken up by man for one reason or the other. So we need to have something more sustainable, something like, uh, you know, we can have just mud, potholes or muds, mud basically, where the water can be, when the, when the rains take place, the water can be filtered and go into the permeate into the ground. So that can be done. And that would also recharge the groundwater which is in required for drinking purposes. So this is all we have on World Environment Day. And I hope this session would have been very helpful. I know it is actually. So for your prelims, as well as it provides you important points for your mains. So thank you for watching. And you are watching IS Primers. And my name, Shubhashish Singrehal. All the best for your preparation. Bye-bye.